well. Roses need a little care this time of year to be their best next spring. That's what you have to do. That's Let right. Tell you all about it. All this time when you're taking care of your lawn and you're taking care of your plants and everything, it's not so much what's going to happen with them now. It's how beautiful they'll be in spring. So, uh, what is this? Another question to Julio <coughs> on the game show. What's your garden? Ding, ding, ding. Okay. What is the one plant that flowers all summer reliably and always has? All summer reliably. Roses. Bing. Got it. I love roses. Nailed I it. really do. Right? Needs a little bit of care, but again, you get so much from them. You got to decide with roses in your fall care. What do you have? What do you have? You, you got to do some pruning and such, but what kind of rose do you have? Is it a knockout or like a shrub rose, drift rose? There's so many... I guess they're they're knockoffs of knockouts, <laughs> right? And so a lot of shrub roses that uh, are, are you know a proven winner's got their version and and so on and so forth. And the reason I say that is, is that you've got that will determine how you're gonna you're gonna prune them, if at all. Now, one thing: let all of the flowers drop off of your roses. And let them form rose hips. That the rose hips are the the like little knot that forms on the end of the, of the uh, rose, because that's going to help them to go into dormancy. And it's uh, it really shouldn't be messed with until like this would be part of, of winter pruning, I would say. But there's a there's a few things just to see if you follow us here on what you need to do. After they all have dropped their leaves, you're going to pick up their leaves because you don't want to have any disease issues that are carrying over. The spores and those diseases in those leaves then go and transfer into the soil. And guess what? You've got a brand new crop of disease coming into those same plants for next year because you left the leaves there and the spores are in the soil. So all season, I would be trying to pick up any of those leaves that are that are falling from your roses if you've got any disease issues for sure. So you're not going to prune right away. You're going to let them form rose hips. Okay, that's basically their fruit. Isn't that a, well, you're like or, organic healing rose kind of thing, right? Rose hips are a vitamin, aren't they? Yeah. So I don't suggest eating them, but just <laughs> just saying. <laughs> uh, that's what a rose hip is. So now you'll know what it looks like. Spray them with a dormant oil spray. Under, you know, the branches, all coat it to the point where it runs off. And then that way you're honestly suffocating any insects and overwintering in egg masses. So like the disease issue, you're also cleaning them up for next year. So you won't have, you know, some of the insect issues. Now, once you decide what kind of roses you have, like say you have knockout roses or shrub roses, like a drift rose, you can treat them like a landscape plant. You know, you just go ahead and shear them. You don't really have to be too concerned. I always like, I don't care what rose it is, I would like hearing, having the centers opened up a little bit so it has a little extra airflow, but it's not as critical for a shrub type. Do you have a hybrid tea or floribunda where there's a gra- they have a grafted root and where they're, it's separate, so the tops and roots? that those are going to need to be uh, opened up and, and pruned down and that you want to keep them more open. And it also should be, uh, really, you should consider, like, uh, some of our, our colder areas that are in our listening zone, like uh, some of the, the Poconos areas and some of the, the New York State areas that, are, that listen to us, you need to um, go ahead and mulch them and again, it goes the same thing. Make sure you got all the, those leaves picked up. What about a climber or a pillar rose? That needs special care. That this is where I always tease Julio about going in and getting his pantyhose <laughs> <laughs> because the canes need to be tied up so they don't blow or create a sail or flap and 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 move around in the wind. And that the best thing, you have to do it with something soft. And honestly, when you're staking roses, you don't want to use a wire or you don't want to use really a a sharp type of um, string because it'll cut into the actual stem and it will kill a whole section. 
you want to to go ahead and and use a um, a, something soft. And the best thing, honestly, are pantyhose. (laughs) (laughs) Using stockings and using them because they they tighten. They make a great knot, and that they can then just it's just easy. And and that especially with climbers, a lot of times, like my favorite rose is in. Father of the Bride, that's Steve Martin. I'm, here I am, movies again. I know. All right. Anyway, the front of the house, like I'm not watching the movie for the story, but the front of the house has a climbing rose that climbs over the top of the entry of the house, and it's beautiful. Anyway. All right. But the only way that you can take care of something like that is if you tie it up so that it doesn't have all of the winter wind that has it blowing off of the top of the house. It's uh, it's something, again, stockings work great. You need to tie up your tomatoes? Stockings. Your tomatoes get a little tall? Stockings. Tie them with the stockings because that it'll create a wider surface area where it's holding on to rather than concentrating it along that stem and you're not you know, girdling the stem. Uh, again, you're going to basically keep them up and gather them up in a bunch because you're not going to prune them. Pruning really should wait until you do your winter pruning. And uh, all the climbers and such like that, I wouldn't even do. I wouldn't do them. I would just let them grow. If you're starting to get crossing branches and things like that, but we'll talk about that in the winter pruning segment that you'll hear probably in February. And that, that's when you're going to do the majority of your pruning. So, again, like we said, let them go into rose hips. Let them mature. That is their fruit. Right. Let them go totally, um, totally dormant. But you do want to make sure that you're cleaning up all around them. Most important. Most important. Um, no leaves around the bases of the plant. Other than that. You don't have much to do. Yeah. You don't easy. have much to do. Yeah, that was an easy it was one. easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> we like easy. Yeah. <laughs> and a- a- ask your wife or significant other if they have any stockings with holes in them yeah. before you go, <laughs> before you go, out, before you go yeah. into the stocking drawer and grab something that's like, I paid $70. Oh, well, no. I, I have no idea how much stocking yeah, it costs. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> <If I did. laughs> Aaron's shaking his head. Do you, do you know what stockings cost? No, but if they cost seventy dollars, mm-hmm. you'd be using an old pair of sheets or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's crazy. Just that's go right. go to the pharmacy or go somewhere else. Absolutely. Yeah. Get them on Sam's sale. Club. There you go. Yeah, yeah, get get, a, get a dozen. Yeah. Ask your wife first. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Right? Amen, brother. <laughs>